Okay, hey guys, right, <clears throat> so this is question 257 on variances. And as usual, I'm sure you've had a read um, of this. So let me just kind of, let's jump straight into it. We see a scenario here where we have this, um, we have some movement um, with with the market. And we see a change in market size. And then as a result of that, um, a new, it might have stayed the same in terms of market share, but um, we also see a change in market share. So this, we have that as a question. And then we also have this bit here where this business is selling two, um, three products actually in different combinations. So just to kind of bring you back to this fundamental idea here of variance analysis, especially when we're looking at products um, that are sold in combination or there are a number of products, we're really looking at ultimately we're trying to find, if you like, the sales variance or the profit variance. And under normal circumstances, if we were just dealing with the single products, we would be looking at, oh, a sales price difference, or literally, this could be just literally a contribution difference or a profit difference, really, on each unit, over all the units. That's all this is. And a volume variance or volume difference. And this is just, did you sell more or less at that contribution? But when you're selling a number of products, the reason why that might have happened might be due to a sales mix difference <clears throat> or a sales quantity difference. And, and, and this really, these two are a subtext of your volume variance. And so the first question is a bit of a, again, like I say, it's, it's not, a, it's not about right or wrong. It's about just trying to see if you can understand clearly the theories out of out of what's been said so let's look at this so it says here that the difference between the sales quantity and a certain variance is that the standard is considered in the former so when we look at this here um, here the the um, here we are so in this scenario we have here the volume variance that we have, and then we have um, the sales mix variance, and then we have the sales quantity variance. So in effect, what they're asking us almost to do is to discuss, almost tease out our, ensure or tease out our understanding, if you like, of the differences between, if you like, the volume variance and the um, quantity, quantity variance. So let's sort of see Let's just go back there and just see what that question is sort of saying again. So we sort of analyze what they're saying. So the difference between the sales quantity, which is this this issue of what I was saying earlier on, the subset of volume and the volume variance is that the, in the former, in the former. So the question is, um, when they talk about the former here, they're talking about in terms of quantity and whatever. So they're talking about quantity. What is considered in 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 the quantity? And like I said earlier on, when we're analyzing, when we analyze the sales quantity variance, if you remember, which is why I've been doing it that way all the time, when we look at the sales mix, we compare the actual mix with the standard mix. But with the sales quantity, we keep both things that we're comparing at the standard mix because we've already compared um, we've already looked at the effect of mixed differences, but now our focus becomes on just, if you like, this idea of the standard, of the standard mix. So it means very clearly that here, um, so we're really saying, that question is really saying the difference between the sales quantity and, if you like, volume, really in effect, is that in the, in the, in the former, in, in, when we talk about sales quantity, the standard mix is considered. We're not exactly considering mix in volume variance. We're, it's just the, it, we don't consider mix within the volume variance. We don't. This is, a, when we talk about volume, it's like we're talking about two completely different things. We talk about volume, we can break it down into sales mix and sales quantity. But we don't in itself consider mix within the volume. And it says the difference between the standard and the actual mix. Again, the strongest hint is that the difference between the standard mix and the actual mix is entirely ignored when we're discussing sales quantity. We discuss the differences between actual mix and standard mix within the sales mix. But within the sales quantity, we're only looking at output. So we're saying, um, tell us your actual quantity at standard mix. Tell us your um, standard mix at um, standard quantity or whatever standard quantity we expected for that output. And we compare the two. So the answer to number one is A. Question A is A. Question one is A. 
All right. The other thing here w w that I want to highlight, especially with these variances, which is really critical, is that we're interested really in the, I, I highlighted earlier on, is really about the contribution or the profit. That's what you're aiming for. So your, your first target is, what is the profit? It's these movements, right, that we're interested in. You know, this is your t classic sales volume variance um, graph. So you, whatever, if contribution was 50 and you expect it to sell 300, this is, this is what we're asking. We're expecting you to come back with, if you like, 15,000. This is the contribution, right? It's profit. And then, okay, you have a volume, you sell more. So, well, there we are. Maybe you sold another 50 more. So the volume variance is pretty much what is that contribution or that profit? If you like, it's the profit. So don't don't get waylaid by the actual sales price, which is why when we ask for the price variance, so we're saying is well, what's the increase in price? Maybe it went from um, um, sixty pound to sixty one pound. We're interested in just the one. We're not interested in the sixty. We're not interested in sixty one. We're interested in the one, which means that we're interested in the profit plus one. So if that's the profit as a result of this whole thing. Well, I don't. Know, it doesn't really matter. The profit was five. It's the profit. If the profit's gone from five to six, that's what we're interested in. This is why that's what you should be putting on your chart. So really critical to remember that with this variance in particular. Okay, let's go to, um, let's now go to the questions and let's see how we, what they want, they want from us. So they give us some information about, they give us these budgeted sales prices. So your first task is to try and find the actual profit. That's the critical thing to work with. And then we can then start manipulating and playing with the information. So that's number one. So the first question, I think the second question says, what is the um, market share? Now, yeah. So this is the first thing to highlight again, that um, let's discuss this. So we, we in class, we discussed the differences between operational and planning variances. And that's what's critical here to understand. Under normal circumstances, this is what would have happened. You would have set your standard here. I'm just reading from the question already. I'm sure you have it at 30,000 units right because you currently have 30 percent of the market sorry forgive me 10 percent of the market which gives a total market of 300 000. that's what you'd have done and then you'd have gone out there compared this standard to what you actually did and when and you you would have a figure so that's what you actually did right and typically this is the scenario we we usually have we'll, we'll come back to what you actually did now, what they're telling us is, oh, actually, then this is your standard standard. And I said to you, sometimes what happens is that events external to us, within, without our power, external to things we just could not control. So we cannot control market size. We can control market share in terms of making sure we work harder to gain market share. So that's really an operational thing, market share. So this business here technically is operational. And then something can happen that, 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 that means that we, we have to revise this standard. And in this question, we are told that the market shrinks by 5%. So if the market shrinks by 5%, this the market, if the market shrinks by 5%, that means that the new um, market, if you like, is 5% less here, and that's uh, 15,000, which takes us to 285 revised standard 285 that's well sorry i'll write the 285 here 285,000 that's the new market available that's the whole new market size and you have no power over this well so again well it means that we have to revise our standard because the market shrunk so to be fair, if we really want to be fair, we need to then say, well, listen, this, since that's the case, well, you should only have 10% of that. We expect you to come back. That's the new standard. To 10% of that brings you to, yes, 28,000. Ten percent of that brings you, whoops, brings you to, 28,000 brings you to um, 20, 285,000 brings you to 28,500. So this is our revised standard. So we have now a planning variance, 
and we call this a planning variance where you had no power over this planning var if you like that's gone down from 30,000 to 28,500 so this is 1,500 all right and that's what we have 1,500 okay there we go so what do we now say we're now saying okay we've gone from um 30,000 to 28,000 five 500 in terms of the in terms of the planning variance um and remember we're talking about this product i'll come back to the pricing but let's just focus first on this so we're now saying you went from here so what did you actually do well the question tells us that you actually got 15 percent of the market so we know the market's 285,000, and it's telling us you had 15 percent of that so calculating that um oh, very quickly um yes that is 42,750. So I'll do, I should write that here, 42,750. So, let's get rid of that. Yes. So, yeah, so this is what I have. So now I have your situation where you've gone, if you like, you've gone all the way from here of 28,500, you've done all the way up here. And that's been your operational variance. So we should reward you for the hard work of yet us having an unfavorable kind of um, um, planning variance. Things have actually shrunk, the market's shrunk, but you've actually come out with, if you like, more more units. So well done to you. So the, the, the operational variance is 42,000. 750 minus 28,500. Yes, minus 28,500, which leaves us with 14,000. Um, 14,250. And your um, planning variance, of course, is this 1,500. So the question here is this: these are just the, the physical units. We now need to multiply these, of course, by to give them some value, some cost value. Remember, these are just units. So the question now becomes in what is that value? So I'm just going to go to my spreadsheet um, here because I've done this now. So I can take you to the spreadsheet and sort of see how we find that. So, I mean, the question says that you're selling um, the, the first set of units, um, the drastics, um, for 10,600 each. So that means that, and they tell you you're putting it at one point, um, a 6% markup. So that means that it's costing you, therefore, right? And I just divide that sale right by some markup so by 1.06 to get the cost and therefore i find the profit and i do the same for each of them finding their profit for for each of them so now that i know what the profit is or the standard profit is for each of them i can now apply that um apply that figure here easily all i have to now do is literally multiply the 1500 times 600 and also multiply the 14250 times 600 and you're you're away yes yeah, so 14000 sorry 1500 times 600 is if you like 900,000 and then we have 14250 times 600 and there you have here 800 and 8.55 million that's what you have here so that's that's number 2 that's number 2 Okay, great. Then let's jump into the issue of the um, um, sales mix and there. And it, this is very similar to everything we've done so far. It's just how you arrange it. Make sure you just arrange it um, in an orderly, in an orderly fashion. And let's talk about the mix. You you know that with that, with mix, the focus is that I will take the figure that you actually did, and this is your in the question we are given the actual mix in the scenario. Please have read it, it, look at it. If you look at the question, it tells us Drastic did 26,000, um, um, Bomber did 16, and Cracker did 14. We're interested in the mix. So there is no difference in terms of volume. In terms of the actual volume, our focus, in terms of a sales mix, our focus is on the the actual final output. We just want to see how did you mix that up. So same thing. We then say, okay, well, no problem. We'll accept your figure. No difference to what we've been doing so far of 56,000. You should have mixed it. You should have mixed it in the ratio. Let's go to the question. You should have mixed this in the ratio 
27 to 15 to 18. So this ratio of 27 to 15 to 18 is the ratio in which you should sell these items. So we now have a total sale of 56,000. We must split that up in that ratio, in that ratio. And that's what I do over here, where you see me sort of, I mean, it's the same figures I, I see here. So I sort of take the 27 divided by the 60,000 and multiply that by the 56,000. And I do that for each of them. Right? That's that's fundamentally the mix. You would do this all the time for any product. It doesn't really matter. We're just interested in mix. And find the differences. Literally, just go across, find the difference, and then multiply that, of course, by their individual profit figures. Right. So that's the 800 times 600. That's the 2,000 times 750. You can see that. And that's the 2,800. Sorry, 2,800 times the 960. Right? And that's what's going on over there, giving you a um, total adverse variance of 708,000. So, well, obviously it's saying that, yeah, so you can see a difference here that you spent. Um, so, so let me just be clear, sometimes I do this in a rush. So 2,500, um, you, you were supposed to use 2,500, you actually used... Um, Sorry, you sold, forgive me, so easy to move between costs and so selling, you sold more. So this is, you, you were supposed to sell 25,200, but you sold more here, so that's favorable. You were supposed to sell 14,000, you sold 16,000, so that's favorable. And here you're supposed to sell 16,800, you sold 14,000, which is adverse, and which is why overall this is so much greater. So you have an adverse variance, yeah, 708,000. And that's the sales mix variance there. And then moving swiftly on into the um, quantity variance, which is what we we're talking about earlier on in question one, we're actually now comparing, if you like, what you should have done, which was 60,000 with what you did. But we've done the mix, so the, the actual mix comparison. So we keep everything as standard. It actually doesn't matter. Even if you had said 60,000 minus 56,000 to get 4,000, you would have split this in that ratio, which is that, right? That's the ratio really in effect. It is no, it, it's the same thing. So what we have, we have 27,000. Best to do it like this, though. Split both in the standard mix ratio. Do that, right? So what am I saying? Here's your 56,000 at, this is what you actually sold, 56,000, but I'm splitting it in the standard mix. And I have it there like that. So I'm literally lifting what's happening here, here. And that's what you should have sold in the standard mix as well, right? And you should have sold 60 in the standard mix. Um... So when I say in the standard mix, that's given to you already. It's the actual it's the actual quantity you're splitting in the standard mix. Find the difference, and and then you um, compare the two again. And literally, that is that is it. I think once you settle that in your mind, you know, you're 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 closer to, to you're there getting the answer, right? And that, those are differences again. And we multiply those by the standard amounts, right? So that's the one thousand eight hundred times six hundred. That's the 1,000 times 750. That's the 1,200 times 960. And we have this figure here. And so that's the answer there. Brilliant. So let's move on to um, question five. So question five. Um, so where are we? So here we are. Okay, great. So let's look at this. Um, so... Um, Yes, this was an interesting one, um, almost almost slippery. If the, I want to start from the bottom. If the mixed variance was calculated as a physical quantity from a physical point of view, so if we're just looking at the mixed variance from a physical point of view, this is what's going on here, from a physical point of view. Right, so let's just look at what they're saying here. This is the mixed variance, and that's your difference, right? Let's look at that. So you can almost see it, almost slippery. The answer would always be zero. Well, let's look at it from a physical point of view. If you think about it, they're right. I mean, look at that over here. If you did 800 plus 200 minus 200, you will get zero. So really, the sales mix on its own, from a quantity point of view, gives you zero, right? It's the actual values, right, that come out and tell us whether or not, um, because you... you the whole idea is we're keeping the mix constant. The bottom line is 56,000. Nothing has changed. So, um, <clears throat> um, what's the word? Oops, sorry, one second. Let me just, um, let me just go over here. Right, sorry, 
I'm just trying to find my my pen. Let me just see what's happening here. Okay, so um, yeah, so if the mix this question that was um, question five. This is to make sure I get that. It's two five um, seven. So yes, yeah, so if the mix was calculated as a um, as a physical quantity. Yes, the, the the answer would always be zero, and that is that is true. That is that is true. I've just proven that to you, hopefully, and shown you what's going on over there. Then the next question says that the market share is a planning variance. So the market share, the market share, uh, it's the market size that is a planning variance. You had no power over the market size, and um, the market share is actually an operational variance. You went out there and you can push. So you went from again looking at this question um, here. You went from. Um, you went from 28,500 to 47,000, 42,750. So that's an operational variance. You actually pushed that. You pushed your market share. This was your market um, size that you had no power over. So um, in effect, this, um, where are we? In effect, the, in effect, the, um, the, Market share variance is an operational variance, if you like, not a not a planning variance. So this is wrong. Unfortunately, this is wrong. So three is not correct. Four is correct. Three is not correct. The sales mix variance will not be affected um, if if labor efficiency on the drastic um, production line increases. Well, if labor efficiency um, increases, well, you will churn out well more more um more goods um so labor directly affects output and therefore you would sell more so the, the, definitely you will have a, a change in the um in in the mix variance because you have more um goods being produced so um the sales mix will definitely be affected if the labor efficiency increases, labor has a direct effect on output and therefore on sales. So this is, so the, this is will not be affected. So, but the sales mix will be, if you like, um, <coughs> affected. Okay, great. And then finally, the sales mix variance would not give, um, useful information to management if Cracker, um, was, was a van. I suppose the issue here really is that, um, we're talking about similar products here. Um, and in terms of, I think that it will give some information in terms of our mixture, but in terms of the fact that we're dealing with, we want to understand what the demand is for these cars, because you can see we're talking about similar, if you like, you have, um, three models of a family car, um, in a way. And because those items are very similar, um, it is, it is easier to compare and understand really why the demand for these items are different. But when you now have a van, which is a completely different product, I guess it can give you a general idea, okay, people want vans as opposed to cars, but it, it's, it's harder to carry out a bit more um, closer analysis. I think maybe this question is slightly flawed, but this one in particular, it does give some information, but maybe you could, I guess the question is, what is useful to each of us? So the argument here is that this is not, um, that this is correct and that it doesn't give as much useful information as we would want as opposed to, well, when compared to the current situation where it is a car. And that's true. If it, we get, we have much better information given that Cracker is a car as opposed to being a van. So the answers here are one and four. One and four. Okay, great stuff. I will see you in the next question.